In late 2025, Poland's Ministry of Defense signed a 240 million euros contract with domestic manufacturer Huta Stalowa Wola. The goal, produce a new generation of Baobab G tracked automated mine laying vehicles with deliveries scheduled to be completed by 2029. This wasn't a routine procurement. It was a direct response to the Russia-Ukraine war where dense, rapidly deployed minefields repeatedly stalled mechanized assaults and bought defenders precious time. For Polish planners, the message was clear. Future wars in Eastern Europe will be as much about terrain control as raw firepower. For decades, many NATO armies treated large-scale mine warfare as a relic of the Cold War. Ukraine shattered that assumption. Both sides used mines not just defensively, but dynamically, to cover retreats, protect flanks, disrupt logistics, and funnel enemy armor into kill zones. Mines didn't just slow advances, they reshaped entire campaigns. Poland's military leadership studied these battles closely and concluded that modern mine warfare must be fast, precise, and digitally integrated, or it simply won't survive on a drone-saturated battlefield. The Baobab G is Poland's answer. It's a tracked, automated mine-laying vehicle derived from the proven chassis of the Crab 155mm self-propelled howitzer. That choice matters. The Crab platform is already optimized for off-road mobility, heavy loads, and combat durability, making it ideal for mine deployment in forests, wetlands, and broken terrain. Unlike older systems, Baobab G isn't about crews manually laying mines under fire. It's about speed, automation, and survivability. A vehicle that can roll forward, deploy a minefield, record it digitally, and disappear before the enemy even knows it's there. Baobab G also marks the end of an era. For years, Poland relied on the Croton, a Soviet-era mine layer based on the MTLB tracked carrier. While functional, Croton is rooted in analog controls and Cold War doctrine. It lacks the automation, GPS integration, and networked command systems required for modern combined arms warfare. Biobab G represents a clean break from that legacy, bringing mine warfare fully into the digital battlefield, where every minefield is logged, tracked, and shared across command networks in real time. Biobab G isn't working alone. In 2023, Poland also ordered 24 wheeled Biobab K vehicles with deliveries planned between 2026 and 2028. Together, they form a two-pronged mine-laying strategy. Biobab K, mounted on an 8x8 Jelch truck, is optimized for speed, capable of laying minefields at up to 20 km per hour along roads and accessible terrain. Each Biobab K carries 600 anti-tank mines, deployable over distances of up to 1.8 kilometers, operated by just two crew members. Biobab G complements this with tracked mobility, allowing Polish forces to deny terrain where wheels can't go. Polish military officials describe Biobab G as a defensive force multiplier, not because it stops armies on its own, but because it controls the tempo of battle. A rapidly laid minefield can delay an advance force enemy units into predictable routes, and buy time for artillery, drones, and air defenses to strike. In modern doctrine, mines are no longer passive obstacles. They're active tools of maneuver warfare, used to shape the fight before the first shot is fired. There's also a strategic industrial angle. Huta Stalowa Wola is part of Polska Grupa Zbrojeniowa, Poland's state-owned defense group. By producing Baobab systems domestically, Poland ensures resilience in wartime when foreign supply chains may fail. As of 2026, Poland stands out within NATO as one of the few armies still investing seriously in large-scale automated mine warfare. That positions it not just as a frontline defender, but as a potential doctrinal leader. Tanks and missiles may dominate headlines, but in the next major conflict, victory may hinge on something far quieter on who controls the roads, the forests, and the crossings.
With the Baobab G, Poland is betting that the future of warfare isn't just about destroying the enemy, but about deciding where the enemy can fight at all. And in modern war, that control may be the most powerful weapon of all.